Good morning. Today we got a 2015 XL 1200 Custom Sportster. I'd like to make a video on things that you must check. Things you must check for safety and for drivability. Sometimes you just don't realize how important little things are, like checking and tightening, air pressure, tires, belt, just little odds and ends. Okay, now for tire pressure. I believe this is the utmost important, is tire pressure. People do not ride their motorcycles enough to realize that you lose, let's say, three pounds a month. So if your tire pressure in the front's at 36, you're at 30 in two months. Now, let's say it's not unheard of for some people not to ride their motorcycle for three, four months. Now, it's not good. All of a sudden, now you're down to 25. And the front of your bike, air pressure in the tire is important. It can make your ride an uncomfortable ride or a very pleasant ride. If it ride. don't roll freely, really smooth and nice, there's a good chance, a good place to start is the front tire pressure. With that, let's check this machine. I'd like to see 36. I check air pressure. I do not ride this bike. And there you go. We got 28, 29. That's the beginning of a horror show. So with that, let me put some air in this. So now, with only 28 pounds in the front of this bike, it wouldn't feel terrible, but to somebody that rides every day, and one day it's 38, 36, the next day it's 26, 28, he would notice. Now, somebody only takes his bike out every two, three weeks, four weeks, they wouldn't really notice. I know it seems hard to believe, but they really wouldn't notice. With that, I'm gonna put 36 in the front of this bike. And I did not stage this, this is one of my bikes, and uh, it just happens. And this is a 2015 with beautiful Michelin tires. It just happens. Put some air in here. Like I said, I like to see 36, 38. Makes for a very nice ride. All right, there we go. It's a big ordeal, this tire pressure. It really is. Your bike will feel responsive. It'll feel like a new bike. I mean, it really makes a huge difference, tire pressure. With that. All right, we got 36 to 38 in the front. I'll check it again later. With that, let's go to the back of the bike. Now for the rear tire pressure. I like to see 41. That's what I'm comfortable with. That's what the book calls for. And that's what I like to have it at. It feels very comfortable when you're riding. With that, let's check it. I had to remove the bag. As you see, this is 31. That's 10 pounds. It's a lot. Let's put some air in this. Like I said, I don't ride this bike. All right, let's check the air pressure now. With that, let's go right to... Next on the list is the drive belt. It is of most important to have the right tension on this drive belt. So now to check that, you could quickly just go right here. I like to see three eighths. They have a scale on the belt guard that I'll show you now. But this is a quick reference. Right there, you know you're, you're where you need to be. But I'm going to show you a spot. It's hidden, but it is there. Okay, this little scale is hidden by your exhaust. You'd have to get very low on your motorcycle to see this or at this angle on a seat, but you'll never see how your belt tension is. So you have to lay down, 
and just take it and you'll see there's a scale I like to see quarter inch three eighths no I have a video on how to adjust your drive pulley belt so with that let me show you where you adjust it the adjustment on a Sportster is done at the axle on the other side there'll be a nut that you must loosen and then you adjust it on both sides with this nut here check your play in your belt and they have a tool it gets you right there right in the middle and that's how you go to both sides and just check your adjustment another way is take a ruler and measure your threads people will say oh that's not the way the book says it's not the way this is the same as the other side so if you have as many threads coming out of this side as you have on the other side this wheel is true and that's what's important the right belt tension and the wheel being true and you did a correct job it's that easy they try to make it complicated but it is that easy loosen the axle make your adjustment measure off these threads on both sides tighten tighten the axle check the belt and you're on your way i have a video on it just ask me and i will send it to you with that let's get to the battery now let's remove the seat and check the battery terminals utmost important Remove that Phillips head. Be careful you don't slip and scratch the fender. Sometimes these can give you a problem. You'll see. Jiggle it. <laughs> You'll see. Just shake it around a little bit. This ties into that. While you're there, quick cleaning. I'd rather discover a problem in my garage than have it happen to me on the road. Now let me bring it to the other side to check the battery. A little pressure, pull it away, and there's your battery. Now be careful, this is your negative. You can get away with a lot over here. When you hit your positive to check it, you don't want to hit the frame. Okay? A lot of people would say disconnect the negative and then tighten the positive. You could do that, but let's just be careful. 10 millimeter. And all we're going to do is just check if it's tight. These will work themselves loose, and then your charging system fails, and your bike breaks down because it won't start. The battery will be weak. This is the one you want to be careful with. This is a 2015. They're all a little different, but the same. What I'm going to do is move these wires out of the way. Be careful. You can get in there. Don't be scared. If you want, just tape it up. That's tight. Okay. Put that like that. These two tabs right here line up. They did a better job with this 15. Other years, these side covers come off. All right, we're finished with the battery. That's tight, everything's nice. And uh, I'm gonna just spray some cleaner on here before I put the seat on. You know I love my Holly polish. Spray a little bit, it's that easy. Wipe it down, because it's hard. You're not going to get to none of this stuff. When the seat's on, this does build up. And this is good stuff just to know your sports stuff. Or your motorcycle in general. 
With that, let's get to the other side and check the oil. Let's check it right now. This hasn't been started. So this should be a little low. I like to see half. You see what we got? It's just on the stick where it says add. This bike has not been started. I'm going to start it up, let it run for a minute, and then we'll check it again. We'll give it a second. Okay. With the seat off, it's easier. All right, let's check the oil. Be careful with these. Hope you could see that. It's about two thirds on the stick before we checked it. It was right by the add line. What happens is when the bike sits for a little while, and it could be a week, the oil will set. It could be three days. The oil will settle and it will be into the dry sump in this V twin motor. You add a quart of oil, and now you pollute the whole system, which causes fouling of the air filter through your oil breather, which causes fouled out spark plugs, and a very lousy running motorcycle. Two thirds on the stick, and you'll have a great running bike. Now, to check the exhaust system. Usually these do get loose. But a 916 is deep. You want to test? Nice. These would be the exhaust slip on. Nuts. Nice. Now, on the bottom, half inch, half inch. There's two of them for this slip on. Now, there's two, we just checked the two half inch nuts on the front slip on. Now, let's check the two half inch nuts. There's one here and one right there. All right. Tight. Tight. Up most important, so many times I've seen these exhausts missing, which makes for another rattle condition. Now let's go to the motor mount. Now for the motor mount. Five eighths, right here on the front of the motor. There's two of them. There's times these bikes will come into this shop and they're missing. They get loose. That's tight. Now I'm going to go around to the other side and check the same. This other side is the one that usually loosens up. Tight. All right, that's the motor mount. That's another popular one. Now let's check the rear and the front foot peg. You will have two Allen heads. One, two. You will need a swivel. The exhaust is in the way. Beautiful. The bottom one is not as bad. Check it. Now I'm gonna go on the other side. That was tight. A lot of times I would see the foot pegs loose. 
And people don't realize these bikes do vibrate. Let's go to the back peg. Now on the back peg, you got one right there and one under here. Let's check this top one. Nice. The bottom one's behind this brake rod. You know what, that's tight. That's my concern. I'm gonna go around to the other side and check the rear. Same thing. Not a problem. Take your time. This one was a little loose. With that, we have the foot pegs. Let's move to the front of the motorcycle. All right, this is the hardware that holds your riser in place. There'll be a bushing and this bolt. Check this bolt. This is a three quarter. I've seen these loose. You could usually tell your handlebars will, they'll move in your hands. You gotta be careful of your brake line, but now they're making them out of, okay. Now you see I got it. Get this on there. Okay. That was a little loose. All right, I'm gonna turn the wheel and go to the other side. That bolt is right here. Let's get our three quarter in there. Be careful. The other side was a little loose. This side was pretty decent. I might have moved it maybe a sixteenth. But like I said, you want your handlebars to be firm. Check them. All right, with a quarter inch Allen head, let's check these riser hardware. A little bit. You don't want to get crazy. That's the riser hardware, that's done. Another, another biggie is the controls. Mirror, clutch, housing, master, mirror. Let's just make sure you check them. The Talkbit, T27. And uh, I have seen in my travels on my King, these loosen up and the control wanted to move. I had to actually stop at a store and get that tool. Because the torque bit, it's not like that's everywhere. Check it, don't. You'll feel it. It's a smaller one on the control casing. I have a little T20. There's two. One on the top. Beautiful. Yeah. One on the top. Make sure you get it square. That's a little loose. And there's one on the bottom. That was a little loose. The mirrors are tight. The clutch has the right amount of play. I want to see an eighth. And that just gives you a, a little bit of play. So you know. All right, we ran through the things you should check on your Holly. And that will keep your Holly running tight. You will notice things that are loose vibrate. If you have any questions, just ask. Let's check the oil one last time before I put the seat on. One of the biggest mistakes with these bikes are the oil settles into the dry sump and gives you a false reading. A must, start the bike, run it for a few minutes. Then check the oil. We ran this about five, 10 minutes ago. We checked it and we seen the difference. Let's check it again.
as you see, it's a little more than half. That's where I like to see it. And I find that I don't have problems with the oil working its way through the breather and causing a mess in the air filter. All right, I'm gonna start it one more time just to make sure everything's all right. Let's turn the handlebars. Ignition. Neutral. This bike runs great. It's a 2015. It's a great bike for scouting around town. If you have any questions, just ask. If I forgot something, please leave it in the comment section. And if you could, thumbs up, ride safe, subscribe, and have a great day.